Good morning, North North Irving Baptist Church. How are you today? Good to see all of y'all and uh, good to have everybody joining us online. And uh, we will continue to do this into the next weeks until we find a something that's going on and uh, we even make plans to continue to tape afterwards so uh we don't know what the new world's going to bring but we know god's going to be there amen. amen so we trust in that be in prayer for the many concerns you have prayer lists uh, that we've sent and uh, have to you in the mail if you're not getting those make sure and give elaine and myself write down your email so that we can make sure that we send it to you uh, because we do want you to continue to pray for these things and for the things that are going on in your church. And we need to continue to pray for our country. We need to pray for those who are working on a cure for this virus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for all you are to us. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Thank you, Lord, that we can learn from you and during this time that we can make profit out of this by just turning ourselves more to you. Lord, help us to help those around us, to be the arms and the legs that help in ministry during our really rough time. Thank you for all you do. Continue to bless our missionaries, both here and in other places. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Burr. Good morning, North Irving Baptist Church. Those of you who are here this morning, thank you so much for being here. And for those of you that are watching from home, thank you once again for logging in and, and joining with us this morning. I certainly hope that uh, the Lord ministers to you this morning. Let us all stand up this morning and let us sing the ancient of days. Lifting our voices before you.
what is going on in this world, God is in control of every bit of it. And we just have to remain in that blessed assurance that He is with us in those times. May the Lord's name be blessed this morning. concepts in all of scripture is that you are blessed and I want you to know today that you are truly blessed as a person of God Amen. so as we think on this I look at Ephesians 1 verse 3 blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ Understand today, Christian, that because Jesus is Lord and because you are in Christ, you are blessed as a one of God's spiritual children with the full blessings of sonship. God has given us believers everything required for the life and godliness that we need to live. Every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. 
Say it with me. I, I am, am blessed. blessed. How do we know this? Well, first of all, let's talk about God. God first has plenty to give. He has plenty to give. Psalm 50, verse 12. If I were hungry and I would not, I would not tell you, this is God speaking, for the world and everything in it is mine. And then the Apostle Paul speaks in Acts 17, 24 and 25. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by hands. Neither is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives everyone life and breath and all things. Amen. Now, we need to understand the concept of the ancient world was that gods were powerful, but they were only powerful in the jurisdiction of the city in which they worshipped. And they would carry them off to battle with them because they wanted to make sure these idols representing their gods, that their gods went with them. But realize God doesn't need us. Okay? He is not going to fall apart just because we're not around. Ephesians 3.20 now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I'm going to encourage you to underline in your Bible these words. The word able, the word above and beyond. He isn't happy with just giving us what we think we want. He gives us what we need and he does it in a way to show us that he did it you know god does things and gives us and is a giving god you know it's god when you get things in a particular way and i am not speaking lightly or trying to offend anyone or offend god himself but god does things in a weird way in a way that is so totally unhuman. And he'll do it and you go, wow, that, that must be God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's good. That's because we need to understand he doesn't do things the way we have it outlined. Now, he does not hold back on his giving. Galatians 4, 4 through 5 says, When the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Romans 8, 32. He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Hmm. I, I might like or even say that I could love you. But I can tell you this, I wouldn't give up my son for you. I love my son and I love my daughter, I love my wife more than that. But do you know that God loved us so much that he was willing to give up his son? God is a great giving God. He doesn't hold back, he restores and he goes beyond. And when he does that, that creates that spirit inside of us. Think about Zacchaeus, the wee little man. <laughs> Zacchaeus, when he was taken care of, when God forgave him, he gave back beyond what the law said that he had to do because he had cheated the people. He gave beyond that. He gave beyond because the spirit had come into Scrooge and he had taken that spirit and was now using it to give back to people. Now, his blessings, thirdly, are given to us to empower us. Blessings empowered Adam and Eve to rule Eden, Genesis 1.28. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. 
Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. Even June bugs. <laughs> Beyond being created, they were given something to do. You know, one of the most boring things is when you don't have anything to do. And then you get it. Powerful blessing to do it. But not only are we given a job, we're empowered. We pray, we study, we obey, relying not on our ability, but on God's sufficiency. And that's what we must do. And then, a second story in the Bible is Abraham's blessing. Abraham's blessing reaches us and it reaches beyond to eternity. Blessing that goes beyond the possible to the impossible. Genesis 12, 2, 15, 5. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless, bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. He took him outside and said, Look at the sky and count the stars if, if you're able to count them. Then he said to him, Your offspring will be that numerous. A promised blessing without reality. Because think of it. Think how old they were at that time. Sarah and Abraham were many years beyond ch uh, ch having children. They were into the great, great grandchildren age. But God worked in their life. And then we see faith is what connects us to Abraham and his blessings. Galatians 3, 7 through 9. You know then that those who have faith, these are Abraham's sons. Those who have faith are blessed with Abraham. We are blessed with them because we, like Abraham, have faith. We have the faith like Abraham. And so we are connected with his blessing. The blessing that he was that was given to Abraham was eternal. An eternal blessing. Matthew 25, 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared before the foundation of the world. We partake in this blessing that was given to Abraham thousands of years ago. God's blessings empowered the Old Testament leaders to accomplish the task that God would give them. Psalms 90, 17. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish for us the work of our hands. See, God was in all of that in the Old Testament. As I've said to you before, I'll say to you again. I've had people tell me, oh, the Old Testament doesn't mean anything. We don't need to study that. Well, if it doesn't mean anything, why is it in the Bible? That's like saying, well... American history up to 1860 didn't mean anything. Then we don't need to study any of that. Well, that's, that's stupid. So I think we need to study it. We need to understand it. That God's power was with Moses when he and the people crossed the Red Sea. When they took the promised land. When they defeated enemy after enemy. When they built the temple. When they returned to the broken walls of Jerusalem. God was with them through all of that. God blessed His people and empowered His people. God's blessings have always been the power of the church to accomplish our mission. We can't do what we need to do without God. 2 Peter 1.3 His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and His own goodness. You want to underline a word? Underline the word everything. His divine power has given us everything. Everything we need is given to us by God. And that means you don't need anything. You don't need to add anything. Christian life doesn't have a sign on the side of it that says, well, just add water. We don't need to add anything. 
God is with us. We have everything we need. God's blessing is a source of contentment. Now, some of us haven't been very content during this time. And I'll say I haven't been. But God's blessing is a source of contentment for us if we'll just turn to Him and ask Him. Philippians 4, 6-7 through 7. Don't worry about anything. I definitely think you need to underline that. But in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Underlining the word everything, anything, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. How easy is it to be thankful at this time? It's not very easy. It isn't a sin to worry. It isn't in a sin to have some anxiety or fear. It, it's a natural thing. You know, it, it, if you walk into a pen and there's a bull in that pen and you don't have some anxiety, well, you're not holy. You're stupid. Because okay? you need to have some anxiety. You need to have some fear. It's natural to have that. It's wrong when we allow the fear and the anxiety, though, to become Lord of our lives. Because that means we push God out of the way. And we should never do that. We have to give our anxieties, our fears, our tensions to God. And we will get a holy peace. There's no reason for that peace. It's peace that comes in the middle of chaos. It's peace that tells us Jesus is down the bottom of the boat, but he can steal the sea. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of peace. Say this after me. God, God got this. Got this. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. I know both how to make do with little and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Whether well fed or hungry, whether in advance or in need, I am able to do all things through Him who strengthens me. A secret to contentment is to realize it isn't what I have or don't have. The secret to contentment is who I worship, who I follow, who I depend upon. And what do they have? And if you worship God and you depend upon God and you follow God, you follow someone who has everything. Amen. We show we're Christians by our desire to help others. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 4. This is when Paul is going out and getting the offering to take back to Jerusalem. And he says, We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that was given to the churches of Macedonia. During a severe trial brought about by affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity. Now, my friends, I don't know that extreme poverty has ever caused anybody to have generosity. But apparently here it did. On their part, according to their ability and even beyond their ability, they begged us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. <clears throat> See, when we give an offering, whether it be a mission offering or our tithes and offerings, it should be considered a privilege. It can, should be considered a joy. It should be considered something burdensome. They, they had an ability and they stood on that ability and God made provision for them. God showed them that he was able to take care of them. All they had to do is want to give. When I was young, I wanted to put something in the offering plate. I wanted to give something. Remember when y'all who were in my generation, 
remember going to kids' Sunday school and you filled out those little envelopes, you know, and you put some offering in there. Well, I like that. I like putting money in the offering plate. So my dad would always make sure he had a whole quarter. Now, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. The boy sure made a lot of noise when I threw it in the offering plate. Okay. It's a wonderful thing to help others because then we are imitating God. And then the key to being super blessed. Now, there's normal blessings. Everybody gets blessed. Even bad people get blessed. Rain falls on the good and the bad. You know? But if you want to be super blessed, and I'm not talking about getting big financial, you know, I'm not smiling saying the preacher, man. I'm not trying to tell you that. But what I am trying to tell you is if you want to be super blessed by God, have confidence in a giving God who will take care of you. Jeremiah 17, 7. The person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, he is blessed. Hmm. It's a sure thing. It's just like your salvation. I had a friend tell me years ago, you know, God wants to bless you. And I've always held on to that. God loves to bless you. We love to bless people. I love to, to bless my kids. And I love to do that. That's a joy. So we need to have that kind of joy. And I know as soon as we get home, the kids are going to want me to bless them with a $20 bill or something. But <laughs> sorry, guys. <sighs> this one is blessed. Remember this week, you're blessed. Amid all the trials, amid all the news, amid all the grief. You're blessed. Remember in our invitation time, if you hear something in the message, if you question or something you want to know more about, let's say you, know, you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, you want to rededicate your life, you want to join the church, whatever you see and hear, you respond on our website, northirvingbaptist.org. And uh, let us know. And I'll be happy to talk with you and email and text and do whatever we can do. We'll maybe even get together and talk and stay six feet apart. But whatever. Let's don't stop doing the work of the church just because the virus is here. Amen. And let me say in closing a word of blessing. This is a word of blessing. Those of you who know Star Trek will know that this, like this, was Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock did this because one time when he was supposed to have his head bowed and his eyes closed, he looked up and he saw the rabbi doing this. And we know that the Old Testament priest used to do this very thing when he blessed. So, I give you this blessing today from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for all we have been able to learn and all the things that we've been able to see in all of this time. We thank you, Lord, that you love us. We thank you that you care for us. Lord, what we want to do is love you more. And by loving you more, we will love each other. We pray and thank